On today's show, we go heavy on hoops as the men and women take on Jacksonville. And we introduce you to softball assistant coach Casey Fagan. Plus, you'll get a taste of bacon, mm. the secret behind the success of Liberty's golf team. This is Flame Central. and diamonds, belly buttons, and bacon. Welcome to Flame Central. He's Red. I'm Emily. Red, I know it sounds like yeah. a strange show, but come on, who doesn't love some bacon? That alone should keep you on the edge of your seat. Yeah, this sounds a little bit odd, but I promise it's <laughs> going to be an entertaining episode. And it starts on the hardwood with some more conference basketball. That's right. ASUN conference play continued in Jacksonville for the Flames. It had been 13 days since they took the floor for a game. Wow. Not an ideal situation situation, no. but hey, you have to roll with it. First game of the series, LU jumped out to an early 6-0 lead led by Kyle Rode, but eventually Tyrese Davis and Dontarius James would get things going for Jacksonville. It was all tied up at the break. To the second half, Liberty was down nine points with seven to play before going on a 13-0 run to take the lead. Chris Parker was huge for the Flames down the stretch with 11 points and two assists in the final seven minutes of play. He finished tying his season high 18 points. Liberty takes game one 59 Ooh. to 54. Tight one. To game two, Liberty jumped out to an early 12 6 lead, and its defense oh. came to play My. as well, holding the Dolphins to just 33% from the floor. Darius McGee into the first half in style. Hitting a three at the buzzer to give Liberty a nine-point lead at the half, just the beginning of a career night for the guard. McGee scored 16 in the second half alone, shooting 60% from the field. He went on to finish the game with a career-high 25 points. Liberty completes the sweep on the road with a 65-58 win over Jacksonville. Hey, Coach McKay, why is solid defense so important? Because you're going to have nights when you're not shooting a great and to be able to to be sound defensively is really important if you're trying to be a conference contender. So yeah, we made some great strides defensively and hopefully we'll continue to, to grow in that area as well. You look around the country, it's tough to win on the road, especially these back-to-backs. I'll never choose or sign up for these again. After picking up the two victories in Jacksonville, the Flames improved a 6-2 and two in conference play, which moves them into a three-way tie with North Alabama and Bellarmine for first place in the A-Sun. Lipscomb and North Florida are right there with a 5-3 and three record. As of right now, there is less than a month before the A-Sun Conference Championship, so it should get pretty exciting down the stretch. Yeah, definitely. Well, sticking with basketball, we here at Flame Central figure that games weren't enough pressure for this group of young men. So Emily loves to ratchet it up a couple of notches with what we would call off the wall questions. And this week's question is pretty tough to beat on the hot seat. My belly button was a button. That could be anything. I'd probably say be able to time travel. It would add to my height whenever I wanted it. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, my, okay camera button so I can take mental pictures of whatever I'm going through. I can just tap the stomach and there you go. My normal self, I could be like 5'9", but come game day, I can hit the button and I'll be like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Instantly fall asleep. Whomever I was in contact with would have instant salvation. I'd probably say it gives me some candy, yeah. If I pressed that button, I'd want it to either have some food ready for me or... I don't know. Oh, every time I push it, I get $100. Just some money or something, I don't know. Generate cash flow as soon as I push the button. Probably like summon food or something, I eat a lot. 500,000 every time I push the button. <laughs> just bring, put food in front of me, I'd say. I just, yeah. Probably invisible, like button, boom, invisible, can't see me. Some interesting answers. Let's reminisce with men's hoops a little bit. Some call this pair of former flames legends. Some label this podcast legendary. Hmm, sounds like a perfect fit. On this week's Flame Central podcast, we sat down and caught up with fan favorites Mayo Baxter Bell and Georgie Pacheco Ortiz. Here's a sneak peek from the interview with Mayo on the memories. 
it's great to see that. I'm like happy when I go back. Uh, I'm most happy to see the banners up there because I can come back, you know, every time and say, hey, we were a part of that or we, we did that. So I, I like the new arena. I love it. And Well, you love it too because there's like that huge mural of you like with your hands up on <laughs> yeah. that last three, isn't there? Like yeah. right inside one of the doors. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, that helps. That's really cool to see stuff like that. I think when you come back, you know, I've never been, you know, I'm, I only played at one school. So being a part of something that was, you know, that'll last for years and, you know, years, especially in the history here, is great to come back and see that. Great to catch up with those two. If you want to listen to our entire conversation with Mayo and Georgie, be sure to download and subscribe to the Flame Central podcast. You can find it on Apple, Spotify, basically wherever you get your podcast. We are there. Well, let's talk some Lady Flames hoops. Get this, they haven't lost since December 6 versus Memphis and were winners of nine in a row coming into the Jacksonville series. Now the first game wouldn't be much of a challenge for the Lady Flames. Liberty would open the game with a 13 to three lead as the Dolphins missed nine of their first 10 field goals. Second quarter and the shooting still would be cold for Jacksonville, missing on their first 13 attempts. By the half, Liberty would be leading 38 to 20, shooting just over 53%. Flames would continue to roll, taking it by a final of 78 to 46, their biggest score differential in A-Sun history. Game two, the snow might have been falling, but that didn't cool off the Flames. LU would come out shooting the three ball, knocking down four triples in the opening 526 of play. However, the Flames would go cold after that, and Dolphins would end the quarter on a 7-0 run, getting four straight points from KK Hayes to narrow the gap to two. Let's jump to the third quarter. Maya Berkman will lay it in to give the Flames a 43 to 27 lead, but then JU's talented freshman, KK Hayes would take over, leading the Dolphins with seven points in a nine to one run, bringing them back to within eight in the fourth quarter. Bella Smuda would come to life along with Redstat. They would combine for 15 fourth quarter points, putting away the Dolphins and leading the Flames to their 11th straight victory. Smuda would come away with her first career double-double in this game. With the wins, the Lady Flames stay atop the ace on standings with a perfect 8-0 record. Directly beneath them is FGCU, who is also undefeated in conference play at 6-0. North Florida rode the play of Jazz Bond to a pair of victories over UNA to claim sole possession of third in the conference, while Jacksonville remains the lone ace on team yet to pick up a conference victory. All right, time to hit the links. The Liberty men's golf team has posted one of its best starts in program history. The Flames finished tied for first with the University of Florida and the Timaquana Collegiate to start this season, and they kept their stellar play going at the C-Best Invitational, claiming a share of second place with Duke University. As you see North Florida taking the title, Kieran Vinson led the way for LU, finishing tied for sixth place with a four over par 214. Liberty will get back on the course for the Vice Star Invitational in Gainesville, Florida, February 12th through 14th. As you may know, golf can be one of the most challenging mental games in all of sports. I can tell you from experience the way my blood boils when I'm looking for my ball in the trees, not fun. The difference for the Liberty men's golf team is one, they usually aren't hitting the ball that deep in the rough, and two, they have a mascot to help lift their spirits and support them nearly every day on the course and the range. Meet Bacon. Everyone loves Bacon. Like, he, he's the best. Bacon is a, is a friend of mine. Uh, I've known him for almost two years now. Bacon's role is probably, like, I'd say he's the mascot of our golf team. Number one, Bacon is the most important over me. All our trainers and everyone who works with the golf team is really important, but I mean, bacon's just that special. Usually I don't like dogs because I'm allergic to the hair of the animals. My life before bacon was miserable, sad. I'm allergic to some dried fruit like peanut butter. Ever since bacon came along, things have just gotten a lot better. I'm allergic to almonds, but with bacon, no, I'm good. <laughs> Hey, uh, yeah, I'm uh, Jeremy Alcorn, um, assistant men's golf coach here at Liberty University. More importantly, I get to be um, Bacon's dad here, so probably the, the highlight of my life. Yeah, he usually has some good golf outfits. Um, he gets dressed well as far as golf appropriate attire. Kind of started with kind of bringing him kind of here and there. Then all of a sudden he doesn't show up for, you know, a week or a few days and the guys are like, when's Bacon coming back? practice he gives some you know swing tips some putting lessons per round bacon probably saves the team 
I'd say four to eight shots. Just because, you know, you get mad, you get frustrated, and then you see him and he's he's calms you down. He's usually laying in the sun just sleeping when we're practicing. Favorite activity, I think, is probably sitting in the golf cart and watching this play. If he's on a golf course, we're just playing in the golf cart and he doesn't move an inch. You know, he likes to nap. He likes to lay down and uh, soak up the sun. And then he likes to, you know, follow the guys around that have food. That us that's usually what gets him up. I got in trouble once for accidentally dropping something and he ate it. So I, I tried to uh, not give him snacks, even though he gives me a sad face. Even though sometimes I love to give him some peanut butter and stuff like that, but Jeremy, our assistant coach, would not allow me to do that. They don't understand that he he doesn't need people food, and uh, but he also doesn't understand that. You see back on him, you are fun, like you are happy to see him, so that's that's cool. You know, it makes brings the happiness on the team. You know, if that doesn't put a smile on your face, then I don't I don't know what's wrong with you. The man himself joining us. Yes. We actually have some breaking news first. Bacon, say hi. Say hi. Say hi, Bacon. <laughs> he is no longer the golf mascot. Okay, he is now that? the Flame yeah. Central mascot because who doesn't love bacon? I know. It's it's taken some time in my life, but I think I finally found my spirit animal. You, you should know? pick you, you should just, pick him up and, and start doing some squats or something. It. Oh, bacon, get back on set. Hey, hey. <laughs> He's a great dog. We're glad to have him here. Such a fun story. All right, well, coming up, we'll show you how athletics and softball shaped Liberty assistant coach Casey Fagan's life from an early age. Plus, we take a look at the Flames' top five plays from the month of January. That's next on Flame Central. What are the moments that stick with you? The ones that take your breath away. Sometimes you find them when you least expect them. You just need the opportunities to pursue. At Liberty University, you can earn a world-class degree and alongside, walk away with memories and experiences that will last a lifetime for all your passions and interests. So what is your dream? Liberty University can ignite it, and your outcome will change the world. Times are changing. At Liberty, we've made it our priority to grow, to learn, to improve. But even with all the change, our purpose remains. We want to equip people to go make a difference through their calling in their communities around the world. And though we are blessed with an amazing campus, our most valuable resource has always been the people, our students, and those who inspire them. It's the people who serve, maintain, support. It's you. But what's really important, not the buildings, not the mountain, not the property, but the young people who use these buildings, who study in these facilities, they are important. No matter what the future holds, we will stay focused on our goal. And the people of Liberty University are how we will continue to carry out our mission. They are the ones who empower us to training train champions, champions for Christ. Christ. Champions for Christ. Training champions for Christ. You work hard. You sacrifice. You do what it takes for your kids to succeed. College can be expensive, but your income makes it difficult to qualify for much, if any, need be state. Until now. Liberty's Middle America Scholarship provides over $20,000 in financial aid over the course of four years to families typically bringing in between $35,000 and $95,000 annually. At Liberty, we don't just believe everyone should have access to higher education. We make it happen. 
Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Flame Central. I know there's still a chill in the air, but believe it or not, softball is right around the corner. And it seems like it happens every spring. Your Lady Flames have been picked as the favorite in the ASUN preseason softball poll. This poll is voted on by all nine of the conference's head coaches. Liberty received five first place votes and edged out Kennesaw State in points, 73 to 67. Amber Bishop Riley was named ASUN preseason player of the year and was joined on the ASUN preseason all-conference team by Kara Canetto. The Flames season is set to start on February 12th against Pittsburgh at the Spring Games. You can give part of that credit for Liberty Softball's projected success this upcoming season to assistant coach Casey Fagan. She grew up on the diamond as sports and athleticism ran in the family. A special moment from her playing days connected her to Dot Richardson and led her to be a part of the Lady Flames family. Just because I move enough laterally to get in front of it doesn't mean my feet stop moving. When it came to sports, yeah. Liberty softball assistant coach Casey Fagan didn't have much of a choice. Good, Ray. My dad played football at Miami. My mom ran track there. We had a weight room in my house, like scales, like typical like football player kind of vibe. And when me and my two sisters were born. We were all very, like, within years of each other. And um, my dad immediately was like, what sport are they gonna play? Um, so we played every sport. So it comes as no surprise that Casey and her sisters fed off their parents' competitive nature. My dad was an undersized lineman, and he constantly instilled in us, you know, you gotta work hard. You're never gonna make it if you don't work hard. And uh, we really ate that up and we were constantly just like sharpening each other and it was just so much fun competing with them and against them. Looking back, I'm, I'm beyond blessed that uh, both of my parents pushed all of us in the way like to be disciplined, um, not only in our athletics, but in everything. Thanks to her upbringing, Casey would become a highly touted softball player and eventually all three Fagan sisters would go on to play softball at different SEC schools which sometimes caused conflicting emotions. It was so rewarding, but also so difficult because it's somebody who you grew up with, you saw how hard they worked every single day and you want them to succeed more than anything, but you also want them to lose. So it's like, you're rooting for them. Like, I will never forget, I'm playing shortstop and my sister's up to bat and I'm like, like she swings and misses. And I'm like, come on, like, what are you doing? Once her playing days were over, Casey worked as a graduate assistant for the softball team at Auburn. It was there that she realized her love for coaching. When I went to grad school, I got the opportunity to work with um, a couple people, like our videographers and uh, our SID. And um, I was stuck in an office all day. I hated it. I couldn't do it. Um, and then I found myself like developing relationships with these girls um, on the team at Auburn. And through those two years of being a GA, I started to see how much I enjoyed seeing kids develop and building relationships with people and um, interacting with them every single day. It, it made me so happy. So ever, ever since then, I was like, I know I'm gonna be a coach because I love it. As her two years as a grad assistant were coming to an end, Casey was unsure of her next move. Then she received a call from an excited Dot Richardson. Well, of course, everyone has heard of Casey Fagan, Gatorade Player of the Year for the state of Florida, National Gatorade Player of the Year coming out of high school. Um, in her own right, a superstar, a Division I athlete from Florida, Arkansas, and then with Auburn. And Dot, I met her uh, when I played in a state championship game um, my senior year in high school. She like put the medal around my neck when we won. So that was the first time I interacted with Dot. She gave me a call and uh, she's like, hey, Dot Richardson, head coach Liberty University. Um, you know, tell me like, what are you gonna do after you graduate? And I was like, I don't know. And so anyways, um, they ended up coming to play Auburn um, that spring. And we met up with her and gave her an interview, all of us, interrogated her, if you would. And it was really great, very impressed with her. Uh, and uh, she wanted to come up. She was interested in learning more about Liberty. Then she flew me out here. And I, I mean, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I've never heard of Liberty. Um, everything's beautiful. Everybody was so nice. 
and I still didn't know. I was still like on the fence. And she was searching also for a program that uh, had the spiritual uh, side of things with the faith in uh, Jesus Christ and really wanted to find that balance in her life in a career. I like prayed before I went to church. I was like, Lord, just please help me have an open heart and open mind. And when I was in the middle of worship, Liberty just like came into my head and I knew, I just knew. All right, now speed it up a little bit, Grandma. What are you doing? After joining Liberty staff, Casey quickly realized that coaching instead of playing required a different perspective. Games were very hard for me at first because um, I'm high anxiety, always have been high anxiety player. My heart rate gets up and especially in competition, but I'm coached now. Like I'm not, I'm not a player anymore. Like I would get so into at bats that I would forget to coach them. Like I would just be like competing with them. I'd be hitting with them or fielding with them or pitching with them. And I had to learn to separate that. Today, Casey's growth as a coach is exemplified in how she interacts with her players and the open dialogue that will help further develop their understanding of the game. Like this. I want them to ask me why. What happened? Yeah, why though? I want them to question everything I give them. You're here and you're trying to draw. I think that that makes me a better coach. I think it shows that they're engaged. Good dad. And I think it shows me that they're not just taking me at my word. They really want to know why I want them to do something and it's going to make them better. So I'm shaping a young woman into somebody who you know she can, she can do anything. Instilling in the Lady Flames the same attitude that has carried her throughout her softball career. We're so grateful to have Coach Fagan here at Liberty. Such a great story. Now we shift our attention to Warm Hot and Fuego. This is a segment where Rhett breaks down the top three athletes, yeah. moments, or plays of the week. Rhett, what's our theme? Theme, carrot cake. I love carrot cake. I don't not see enough. carrot cake, though. You can't have that theme and not bring a carrot cake. I know. I should have. And if that was a great thought, you know, I've messed it up. But anyways, carrot cake, absolutely love it. It's substantial. It has, mm -hmm. you know, it has a vegetable in there. So it's a good thing for you. Three ingredients. Yes. We start with warm. warm. What is it? Kieran Vincent, he is like the spice. If you're from Zimbabwe, I know you know about the spice of life. I'm just sure of it. Tied six for over par. Led the way for the Flames. Second straight event. You mentioned that earlier. 13 birdies in this tourney. And for a guy that battled injuries throughout his Liberty career. It's great to see him over the course of last season and this season start to put together some consistent quality golf. And like you talk to guys, they love they love him. Like he's just a good character guy, fun guy to have around. He keeps you laughing. And the fact that he's playing great golf right now, you just feel really happy. For I need him. to head out to the Liberty Golf Facility, yeah. get some some pointers from right. him. From warm to hot, who's hot? Bella Smuda, the carrot, long and lean. Long oh, and lean. She's just getting it done. The freshman coming in has been spectacular. And I don't think you could ask for much more from her. Saturday, 12 points, eight boards. Sunday, 15 points, 12 boards. First career double-double. First freshman to do so since? Can Green. That's right, in 2017. Well, we're rhyming here, this is good. <laughs> Biggest takeaway though from this was the Sunday performance. First half, she was on the struggle bus. She could not get a shot to drop. She got called for three travels. You could see it was in her head a little bit. So the fact that she was able to regain composure, bring it back down, got chatting with the coaching staff, and then started to take things over when they needed her to in the third quarter because Jacksonville's coming on a run. And all of a sudden, Bella Smuda, along with Rhett Stat, the couple bigs that have some guard-like skills, started to play extremely well, and that took it the rest of the way for the Flames. So Bella Smuda, I know we've we've had nicknames for Smuda Matata. She has just been really, really solid so far. And it's just it's a lot of fun to see how or pro project how far she's going to go in her career because she's going to be top notch. Bella, not a huge fan of carrots, but if you dump a couple pounds of sugar in there, I'm all about <laughs> it. All right, we end things with Enfuego. Yes. What is in Fuego? Darius McGee, he is the icing. You gotta get Ooh, that good cream ice. cheese icing oh, on a carrot. You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh yeah. Versus Jacksonville, McGee goes eight of 14, three of six from three, 25 points. That double clutcher, like, I don't know how he got that off. We'll talk about 
that shot a little bit more here in a minute. But good to see him go off on a night where nobody else hit double digit points. You need your guy, your score to take it to another level. And McGee did that in the second half. Had 16 points. He was shooting up near 60%. And he was just getting different looks. He was slashing to the basket, driving from three, kicking out. Like he was doing it all for the Flames. And if you can get more performances like that from McGee, you're going to be in some pretty solid shape. When he starts seeing him fall, he's fun yeah, to watch. Sure. All right, well, don't go anywhere. Top plays coming up next. At Liberty University, we don't just believe everyone should have access to higher education. We make it happen. That's why we are offering our Middle America Scholarship to help families like yours by providing over $20,000 over the course of four years. Money should not hold you back from the life-changing experience at Liberty University. Find out if you qualify for the Middle America Scholarship today. Welcome to Liberty University's online programs, where living out your calling with integrity is what you train to do, and getting ready for the future doesn't mean missing out on the now. Because a university is more than buildings and books, and an education should set you free, not fence you in. Welcome to Liberty's global campus, where distance learning was pioneered and evolved into one of the top-ranked schools in the nation. Where protecting your budget, your time, and your education isn't just a theory, it's our priority. Here, degrees in your field reflect industry demands and help get you ahead of the competition. Where college comes to you, but you can come to college too. Game day, homecoming, graduation day, your school, your values, your experience, your choice. Welcome to Liberty University, where we train champions for Christ. Well, hey friends, welcome back to the show. You know, believe it or not, January 2021 is already in the books, which means we have some top plays to get to. Yeah, Red, and you might assume this countdown is going to be loaded with who? I would think so. And I'm not saying you're wrong, but let me remind you, there's a Canadian nah, on set, true. so there has to be a play coming from the ice. Yeah, but let's start with hoops here. Play number five, Liberty Basketball was at Jacksonville last weekend, and Chris Parker nearly unstoppable. Look at this strong take to the basket. The hoop, the harm, what a play. By that young man, Parker had a team high 18 as he helped the Flames secure the win in Jayville. See, I wasn't lying. To the rank we go, Liberty facing Long Island, and this goal from Ryan Cox would prove to be the winner. Why is that important, Brett? Because that win for the Flames would be the program's first ever victory against a Division I opponent. A huge win for Liberty Hockey and head coach Kirk Handy. Yeah, let's go to the hardwood. This game against Stetson earlier in the month, Elijah Cuffey misses. Blake Preston throwing it down like a rodeo clown. Woo! That throw down helped the Flames secure a win on the road, 68 to 58. It was monstrous. Look at it one more time. Let's show some love to the ladies. The Liberty women <laughs> taking on Jacksonville and Kennedy Williams oh, just like showing it. off, faking the pass, hero stepping and then delivering a perfect feed to Bella Smuda Matata for the layup. One of three assists on the day for Williams as the Lady Flames route the Dolphins. Back to the fellas, the time winding down at the half, and Darius McGee, the double clutch triple. Take another look at this one. I will. A big momentum booster for this team, but the strength. How on earth do you clutch it twice and still get the triple? What a shot by Darius McGee, a big moment heading into the locker room. I'm telling you, it's because he has those ups. I did a jumping contest, yeah. and that was the worst decision I've ever done. <laughs> In the meantime, hey, why don't you go make sure you go to our website, libertyflames.com. Click the Flame Central link. You can find all our stories there for you to enjoy. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Flame Central. For Rhett McGibbon, I'm Emily Austin. We'll see you right back here next week.